Today we're going to talk about iambic pentameter. And iambic pentameter is the rhythm that Shakespeare used for his verse lines. So of course, in some cases he wrote prose, but for all of his verse lines he used iambic pentameter. Now let's break down what this rhythm is. First of all, the rhythm of iambic has a ba ba. That's that rhythm, ba ba. You use the iambic rhythm pent meaning five times per verse line. That's what that iambic pentameter means. So, so the iambic rhythm five times per verse line. So the rhythm is to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. Each one of these lines is a verse line. So let's just do that rhythm again. To tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. And you can actually use your fingers to help with that. Okay, one more time. To tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. Now let's talk about some words and phrases that take the iambic rhythm. So here we have some words and one phrase. Now, if you were to say each one of these words, you will notice that they naturally have the iambic rhythm. So saying the word above, above, the way you normally say it. You see how you don't emphasize the first syllable, but you emphasize the second syllable. So that has an iambic rhythm to it. Above, above, same thing with surprise. First syllable is emphasized. Surprise, excuse me, the second syllable is emphasized. Surprise, surprise. And in this one, amaze. Amaze. These all have the iambic rhythm to them. Amaze. Indeed. 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 Appear. 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 And the phrase, I see. See how that naturally has an iambic rhythm to it. I see. Now we're going to write an iambic pentameter sentence. Okay, right here we have a sentence that it was written in iambic pentameter. So the first thing you do is you break it up into feet. So the first foot, so the, uh, every foot is going to be every two syllables. I am amazed to see your nice surprise. And then you scan it. So you're going to mark which syllable is unemphasized and which syllable is emphasized. I am amazed to see your nice surprise. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to Shakespeare's iambic pentameter line. Here we have a Shakespeare line. In sooth I know not why I am so sad. So let's go ahead and scan that. The first foot comes after the word in sooth. The next foot, I know. Next foot, not why. Next foot, I am. And then you scan it. In sooth, I know not why I am so sad. Now let's talk a little bit about why it's a good idea to scan your iambic pentameter lines. First is it tells you what you have permission to stress. So if I did this line and I said this, in sooth I know not why I am so sad, it wouldn't sound right. Hopefully it does not sound right to you. But if I said it normally, in sooth I know not why I am so sad, that fits the rhythm. Another thing to keep in mind with scansion is that the stress is relative stress. So within a foot, sooth is stressed a little bit more than in, no is stressed a little bit more than I, why is emphasized more than not, etc. That doesn't mean that sooth, no, why, am, sad get exactly the same emphasis because if you did that it would sound like this. In sooth I know not why I am so sad. And that sounds sing-songy and it doesn't have the same meaning. What you still want to do is figure out which words you're going to emphasize like you would with any any piece of text. So in any verse line, there's usually two or three words you might emphasize. So for sure, you would want to emphasize the word sad 
because first of all that ends the verse line and it's also probably the most important word in that verse line. So at that point you could have some options. Maybe you want to emphasize no or why. You could say, in sooth I know not why I am so sad. Or you could say, in sooth I know not why I am so sad. Okay, as long as you hit that word sad. But it gives you choices. What you don't want to do is make it sound sing-songy by um, repeating the iambic tameter and up and down. So you want, us, you want it to still sound um, natural to some extent. Okay, here we have two more Shakespeare lines, and we're going to scan them together. Oh, wilt thou darkling leave me, do not so. So the first foot comes after the word wilt. Next foot becomes after the word dark. You see how this foot is splitting this word? And that happens often. Okay, so that's perfectly normal. Leave and do. Oh, wilt. Thou dar, cling, leave, me, do, not, so. Let's do the next line. Tell you, I do, not, nor, I can, not, love you. Now you'll see this has an extra foot after it, or an extra beat, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Tell you, I do not, nor I cannot love you. Now, if you were to just say this sentence without adhering to the scansion, you might be tempted to emphasize the word not. You might be tempted to say, Oh, wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so. However, as you see, not is, is not in the stress position in the scansion, so it reinforces that you want to emphasize the positive. Oh, wilt thou darkling leave me? Do not so. Same thing here. You might be tempted to say, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you. Instead, making sure that you emphasize the positive here, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you. Tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you. So this is one of the benefits to scansion, is it tells you what words you have permission to emphasize, and it leads you away from the temptation to emphasize incorrectly pronouns or nots or the negatives more than the positives. Another reason that you need to scan your verse lines is to know how to pronounce a word or a name in that particular verse line. Um, because it can change. So these are two separate verse lines that take the name Romeo. Now here's a question for you. Is Romeo two syllables or three? Do you say Romeo, three syllables, or do you say Romeo, two syllables? That depends on how it scans. So let's take a look at this very famous line, O Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? And let's go ahead and make Romeo three syllables and let's see if that scans. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? That doesn't work very well. Now let's make Romeo two syllables. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? And again, you have that ending, which we'll talk about in a second. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? So in this verse line, Romeo is two syllables. And that's how you have to pronounce that. Now let's try this one. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. So you have to add that extra foot at the end of the line to have ten syllables. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. One, two, three, four, five. Five syllables. So it's very important to scan your verse lines so you know how to pronounce words and names. And we'll talk specifically about words uh, a little bit later on.
Okay, we're gonna scan this line from Midsummer Night's Dream together. So first you need to go through and mark your feet. Take come, for he no more shall see my face. And scan it. Take come, for he no more shall see my face. My san, der and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see. Seemed Athens as a pair a dice to me. See how you really have to attend to where the syllables come. Okay, and this is where it helps. Use your fingers if you need to. Bum ba, bum ba, bum ba, bum ba, bum ba. Really try to get that rhythm in your head. To tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. Now, obviously, that's not how you say it. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Okay, now we're going to start to talk about some variations from the iambic pentameter because sometimes within a verse line, you're going to have some differences. Now here we have Hamlet's very famous to be or not to be speech. So let's just go through this first line and let's count the number of syllables in this first line. To be or not to be, that is the question. If you counted correctly, you will notice that there are 11 syllables in that verse line, not 10. You will also notice that unlike the other endings where we end on a strong syllable, this particular word, question, ends on an unstressed syllable. So you cannot say, question, that would sound uh, incorrect to say the least. So you see how it has a rhythm of bum 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 on that last syllable. So we're going to scan this. To be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. So this is a very common ending in iambic pentameter. So if you run into this, this is correct, this is common. Don't try to change it because it's the way it's supposed to be scanned. Anytime you have a word, and you'll see with suffer, fortune, and troubles, where uh, it ends the verse line and the last syllable is unstressed, that's when you do this ending. And the rhythm is to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. And it's called a feminine ending, and it's very, very common in Shakespeare. So let's do the next, uh, the next uh, line of verse. Weather. Now, you know, you can't say weather. You have to say weather. You have to. Um, pronounce these words the way they're supposed to pr be pronounced. So you'll notice, and we'll talk about this next, that this beginning has to start like that. So instead of it being an iambic, it's a trochee. And we'll talk about that uh, next. Weather. Then you go back to the iambic pentameter. Tis no blur in the mind to suffer. And you see you have that, that uh, feminine ending there, bum bum ba, where it ends on an unstressed syllable. Now, when you have a trochaic beginning, you go right back to iambic. So the rhythm is bum 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 ba. Now, let's just take a look at this line for a second. In general, you don't want to emphasize words like not or, or any kind of negatives. 
But in this case, you see that the word not is in a stressed position in the scansion. Why is that? Because it's a comparison. To be, to live, or not to live. So it is actually in a stressed position in the scansion telling you that you not only have permission to stress it, but that you probably should. Okay? Let's do the next line. The slings and a eh, rose of a ray just fortune. There's that ending again. Next line. Or two, take arms against a sea of troubles. So far, so good. Now, this next line is going to um, cause us some problems because you cannot do this. And by opposing and them to die, to sleep. You would never emphasize the words to over the words die and sleep. So you know it has to be this. So this is where we get into some irregular verse lines. So that has to be that. So what do we do here? And by a po, zing, end them. Now you have a choice here. You could just make this a three foot line, which is fine. And by opposing, end them, to die, to sleep. Sometimes um, verse lines in Shakespeare's plays don't scan perfectly, so you have to make little adjustments. There's also another choice here, which is to make this a six-foot line, which occasionally happens. One, two, three, four, five, six. And to actually have a silent beat right here um, where there would normally be um, an accented syllable. And by opposing end them to die to sleep. This silent beat in the middle of a verse line um, can be an indication of a pause or a character's awareness or something that is dawning on them or a beat change or something like that. So you'll notice as you scan lines in Shakespeare that there are little clues that Shakespeare has put into the scansion to help you in the interpretation. Not the least being what words to emphasize, but sometimes where pauses would occur. Okay, now let's talk about the trochaic foot. There's another rhythm um, that is used in iambic pentameter frequently, and it's called a trochee. And basically, it's the reverse of, of an iambic rhythm. So instead of going bum ba, it goes bum ba, bum ba. As in these words actor, city, shadow, beauty. So a trochee, a trochaic foot, often appears. Here you have an iambic pentameter line. So you have one, two, three, four, five. These are the feet. A trochaic foot often appears in the first foot of an iambic pentameter line. Frequently it does that. A trochaic foot can also appear in the third and the fourth foot of an iambic pentameter line. So it's very common to see a trochee in the first foot and common, maybe not as common, but certainly common to see a trochee in the third and the fourth. You rarely, but occasionally it happens, but very, very rarely see a trochee in the second or the fifth foot of an iambic pentameter line. So if you have a trochee in the, in the second or the fifth foot of an iambic pentameter line, go back and look at your scansion because you may have uh, made a mistake. So just remember, it shows in the first, the third, and the fourth. And now we're going to scan some lines together that uh, take trochees. Okay, here we have three lines from Lysander in Midsummer Night's Dream. Let's scan these together. Uh, first foot would come making. Now, we can't say making, so you know that's a trochee making. It moan and te re as a sound. Swift as a shadow, short as any dream. Now, 
you don't, you wouldn't say swift as. As you look at this, you know this should be a trochaic beginning because the word swift is so much more important than the word as. Swift as doesn't work as well as swift as. A shadow short as any dream. Brief as, again, you want to say brief as or brief as. The lightning in the call lead night. Okay, we're going to do one more of these where you have a trochaic foot in the middle of the verse line. Okay, this is from sonnet number 97. Like we dug wombs after their lord's decease. Like we dug wombs. Now, you cannot say after. You have to say after. Trochi. Go back to the iambic. Their lord's decease. You see, this is in the third foot of an iambic pentameter line which can happen, first, third, or fourth, not second, not fifth, usually, like widowed wombs after their lord's decease. Good, now let's talk about compensation. Okay, there's um, the word compensation is when you make a word longer than you normally would to make it fit the iambic pentameter rhythm. So for instance, Let's take the word blessed. Perhaps you have been reading along in your complete works of Shakespeare and you've noticed these little lines over some of these words or you've noticed spellings like that. Now what does that mean? Depending on the um, editor, when you see it like this, that means you're supposed to say blessed, blessed. When you see it written like that, that means you're supposed to say blessed. That's paved and that's paved. However, I would say never just trust what uh, the editor has written for you, especially if you get it online. Make sure you scan it. Now, when you say these ED endings, you don't make them ed. You don't say blessed or paved. It's very subtle. It's just a little is sound. You just make it a little bit longer. Blessed, paved. So it just has that little extra syllable to help with the iambic pentameter. So with ED endings, these will often be ED um, ids. This is another reason why it's very important to scan the line so that you're saying these correctly. So make sure you know whether it's used or used, et cetera, et cetera. And you have to scan the line to know that. Here we have vision. How we normally would say that in derision. Vision normally would be two syllables. Vision. Vision. Depending on the scansion of the line, you may have to make it three syllables, and that would be pronounced vision. 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 Derision is normally three syllables. Derision. Depending on the scansion, you may have to say derision. Derision. With that little extra syllable. You have to scan the line to know. Okay? Now let's go ahead and scan some lines using compensation. Okay, let's take a, a look at this line from Romeo and Juliet. But banished to kill me banished. That doesn't work out. However, if you add those little ED endings, it scans a lot better. But ban is should to kill me banished. To tum, to tum, to tum, to tum, to tum. Also, notice how important this word is. Now you have an extra syllable to interpret that word to do something with it. So instead of banished, two syllables, we're going to emphasize that word by making it longer, banished. But banished, to kill me, banished. Here's a line from um, It's a Nice Dream. This one doesn't have compensation to it, uh, like to, uh, da, bolche, Reci, mean parted, but does have a feminine ending. Uh, the next line does. But yet a union in partition. You notice, uh, if you said that word the way you normally say it, 
you would not have 10 syllables. So we're going to add an extra syllable there. But yet, a yu, yun in, parti, xian. So it would be, but yet a union in partition. So you can say it and still be subtle with it. It doesn't have to be super obvious, but you do want to maintain that iambic pentameter and make that word just a little bit longer. We're going to do one more uh, example of this. Here's another example of compensation. While that the armed hand doth fight abroad does not work, scansion-wise. However, you add a little ed ending there, and you it works beautifully. While that, the R, mid hand, the fight abroad. Now you'll notice in this next line you have th and apostrophe a. That's what we're going to talk about next, and that's called elision. So instead of saying the ad, which is two syllables, the ad, um, you make it one syllable, bad, bad by, zud head defends itself at home. So anytime you are scanning a line and it doesn't work, go back, see if you have an ed ending in there, see if you need to add that ed ending. Um, sometimes they will give that to you, that little line there, that accent line, but not always, so make sure you, you scan the line. Okay, now we're going to talk about elision. Okay, elision um, is when you make a word shorter than it would normally be to make it fit the scansion, which makes sense because when you elide something, you put it together, you make it shorter. Now these are just some of the most common elisions that you will see in Shakespeare. Tis, meaning it is, or meaning over. Over, two syllables, or one syllable. And you pronounce it like um, the thing you use in a boat, or. Een means even, one syllable, een. Air means ever, and it's also pronounced with one syllable, air. Tis, or in air. Another word that is commonly elided is the word heaven and also the word even. Sometimes they'll be two syllables, sometimes they will be one syllable. So if this was one syllable, it would be heaven. One syllable be even. Now it does sort of sound like you're doing two syllables and in a sense you are, but basically you try the best you can to make it that one syllable Heaven, even. Again, this is why it's so important to scan the lines because you need to know, do you say heaven or do you say heaven? Do you say even or do you say even? Here's another common elision that you will see. I apostrophe, TH apostrophe, and then any other word here. What this means is in the, in the. You will light it. The, normally in the age would be two, three syllables, in the age. But what you do is you take these two words that would normally be two syllables and you make them one syllable, ith, ith. Make sure you understand that that's not the word I. You don't want to say I the age. Make sure you pronounce it as I, I the age. I the age is how that would be. One syllable here, in the age. You could even say in the if you wanted to, but most importantly make sure that you are saying the right words there and the right sounds. You'll also commonly see this. Same thing, this is got either going to be of the age or on. So this, this O could be on, on or of, but what it isn't is O. It's definitely not O the age. So just make sure you know what you're saying, and again, you just elide it. Of the age. Of the age. On the age. Here we have two verse lines. Uh, that in the spleen unfolds both heaven and earth. Does not work. So you know to make that one syllable. That in 
a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth. If the ka man wealth, I would by con treries. Okay, good. Now we're going to talk about stichomythia. Okay, stichomythia is when you have one verse line, one verse line, but two or more characters share that same verse line. And usually you know it's stichomythia when the next person's verse line begins all the way over here. That's the editor telling you that these two characters share the same verse line. So here we go. You treat it as one verse line. I would, I were, your bird, sweet so would I. This is kind of akin to when you have a close friend and the two of you finish each other's sentences. So you're on the same wavelength. These characters are on the same wavelength they're finishing each other's iambic pentameter line. All right, let's scan one more stichomythia line. This is from Hamlet. It is a fan de sea, it stalks away. Now, in this case, they share the same foot. Bum, 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 And that's very, very common. Here we have Romeo's favorite, uh, famous, famous speech. But soft what light through yonder window breaks. So let's go ahead and scan this. But soft what light through yonder window breaks. It is the East, and Juliet is the sun. Now, how do you pronounce the word Juliet? Is it three syllables, Juliet, or two syllables? Let's try it with three. It is the East, and Juliet is the sun. Let's try it with two. It is the East, and Juliet is the sun. You see how two syllables works out much better. And Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. Who is already the sick and pale? with grief. That thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is en the us. Now, you see this word envious, envious, envious. In the same speech, just a few lines apart, two syllables, three syllables. So this is why you really need to scan your text. Be not her maid since she is envious. All right, thank you. Now begin and try to scan some verse lines on your own.